So this is why we are here, and um, again, we're very grateful that you all you've come here tonight to join with us in building solidarity, to building a campaign um, to, for the council to introduce a caveat to protect and allow free speech on Palestine in Tower Hamlets. Um, to help us to build this campaign, to build solidarity, we're very grateful to a number of people who have come to speak tonight, who have all shown, who work tirelessly to build solidarity for Palestine in different contexts. Um, and I'll introduce them uh, as they come to speak. First, uh, delighted to have Claire Short uh, speaking tonight. Um, Claire needs little introduction. She was an MP for 27 years, uh, served as the Secretary of State for International Development in the Labour government for six years, and then resigned in connection with the Iraq war, and has been a prominent um, critic of, of Israel's actions and a supporter of Palestinian rights. And recently I was very pleased to, to see Claire speaking out about calling out the anti-Semitism smear campaign that's been taking place. So for all these reasons, delighted to, um, to welcome Claire to say a few words this evening. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here with you in this holy place. And thank you, Father, for um, hosting us. You know, Archbishop Tutu, as we're in a holy place, let's think of a holy man, uh, that famous Archbishop who stood against apartheid for so many years, has said more than once that the apartheid in Israel against the Palestinians is worse and crueler um, than that they suffered in South Africa. And then Nelson Mandela, of course, said in 1997, on the uh, day of solidarity with the Palestinian people, um, that the people of South Africa would not really be free of apartheid and the, until the Palestinian people were free of apartheid because they suffered in the same way that they understood. Now both these people, if they'd been members of the British Labour Party, obviously they wouldn't have been because they lived in South Africa, would have been probably threatened with expulsion for saying these things. And yet, you know, Nelson Mandela came to the UK, I think it was 98 or 99, after the Labour government of 97 was installed, to thank the members of the Labour Party for their solidarity in the campaign against apartheid. Went on the platform with Tony Blair, got lots of hugs from Tony Blair, even though we never did see him outside South Africa House when the campaign was on, that is Tony Blair we didn't see. So no one was talking about him Nelson Mandela being guilty of anti-Semitism at that time. And as you know, he's an icon all over the world. I was out, outside the Labour Party hotel at the conference when he just came out, and all the staff of the hotel came down just to admire him, and had tears in their eyes. And they were political people, just this love and admiration for this man who stands for something that we're trying to stand up for here tonight. Um, now, why did the sudden spate of allegations of massive problem of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party suddenly break out? It's because uh, Jeremy Corbyn was elected as leader of the Labour Party and he had a long history of solidarity with the Palestinian people. I mean, there's lots of people who went into vicious attack and said there was massive problem of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. You never mentioned such a problem just shortly before that time who'd scampered around the country trying to be selected to be proud representatives of the Labour Party. Um, so, and, and Jeremy Corbyn, and I'm not asking anyone to be particularly supportive or not supportive of Jeremy Corbyn, but everybody knows he's got a proud record of anti-racism and opposition to all forms of racism throughout his political career. So it's quite clear that he was not, and is not, an anti-Semite and that the issue that they were attacking him on was his sympathy for the people of Palestine. Um, now, of course, for us in the UK, we might take this very personally and think it's just us, but it's not, this is not just happening in the UK. In the United States, the belly of the beast, so to speak, there's a mounting campaign of solidarity with the Palestinian people, particularly in universities, young Jews, young Arabs, young Muslims, young left-wing students standing together, campaigning, supporting the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, and they are being smeared with the same accusations. This accusation 
that weaponizes anti-Semitism to try and halt any action in solidarity with the Palestinian people. Um, and it's an international movement, we've seen it in Berlin, there was someone who was the head of a great museum, similarly attacked the minute any such sympathy is shown. And of course, there's this attack on the boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign, a peaceful campaign called for by Palestinian civil society, learning the lesson and example of the people of South Africa, who call for people boycott, divestment and sanctions. And suddenly, this is being made illegal in state after state in the United States, and the government here trying to stop local authorities from allowing any support for boycott, divestment and sanctions for the pension funds of local government workers not to be allowed to uh, take such action. So you can see what's happening. Anti-Semitism, which is a great evil, and I'm going to come on to that, is suddenly being weaponized to prevent any criticism of Israel. Um, So this is the new anti-Semitism, and the definition that has been referred to, that's been adopted after lots of brutal badgering by the Labour Party and apparently by the local council and councils up and down the land, expands the definition of anti-Semitism from hatred of Jews as Jews, and my God, there's a history of evil hatred of that kind of persecution, particularly in Europe and in this country too, um, to, in, to extend it to include criticism of Israel, which is a nonsense. Israel is guilty of grave breaches of international law. There is enormous cruelty being inflicted on the Palestinian people. To say that is in no way anti-Semitic, but that's the trick they're trying to pull. To close down debates about Palestine, Israel, and to say anyone who's critical of Israel is anti-Semitic. We've got to hold these two things in our minds all the time. We've got to stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people, um, but we must not slip into anti-Semitic remarks. I think there are some people who are so angry about this that they end up listening to the conspiracy theories and starting to say anti-Semitic things, out of ignorance often. But we must all hold on to this distinction and never allow that to happen. Because as you all know, um, the history of anti-Semitism in Europe is very long-standing and in, in enormously cruel, much more so than in the Ottoman Empire, for example. Um, Europe is the core of anti-Semitism, and it culminated in the Holocaust in the Second World War, when six million Jews were slaughtered uh, out of pure bigotry and hatred of Jewish people as Jews. Um, and we must never forget that that happened. And of course, there was also slaughter, slaughter of the Roma people, Religious dissidents, gay men, political dissidents, and lots of Slavs, Poles, Russians. Once you start blaming and hating one group, it's easy to start spreading the smear and the hatred. And people then are not explaining whatever is going wrong in their lives or in their country by looking at the facts. You look for groups to blame and hate. And it's a way, as well as being evil in itself and cruel and culminating the way it did in Germany, it confuses all political debate and stops all solidarity. And there's a little bit of that going on amongst us now on this, on this issue. In the UK, hate crime is rising. Home office figures, and most people say that they underestimate the problem, say there's a considerable rise over the last five years. Nearly half the people who are subject to such hate crime are Muslims, and 20% are Jews, and then another large group are gay. So we see the beginnings of this spread of hatred. Um, so we must all be clear, free speech on Israel is absolutely sacred. We've got to stand in solidarity with the suffering of the Palestinian people, just as lots of people did on the question of South Africa. And, and you know, people of my generation remember, and I see some of us in this hall, when we started boycotting South African origins, people used to sneer at us and say, how could you possibly, how could that have any effect? And I was in the House of Commons when Mrs. Thatcher said, Nelson Mandela? 
he was still in prison then, he's a terrorist. So now, if you talk to people, everyone was against apartheid in South Africa. But it wasn't so, you know, it wasn't so. And I was also still in the House of Commons when Nelson Mandela was invited as an honoured guest to address both houses. And this is the biggest honour the UK Parliament can make to anyone. And they put red carpets all over Westminster Hall and they have people with bugles in that very British way. Um, and there were lots of Conservative MPs in the audience climbing over the chairs to get into a photo with him. Just a few years after Mrs Thatcher denounced him in that way. And I want us to remember that because these times for Palestinians are very cruel and very hard. And the suffering in Gaza is quite dreadful. And the United Nations is predicting an absolute humanitarian catastrophe. So things are going to get worse and the cruelty continues. And our duty is to stand up stand with the Palestinians, expose what is going wrong, however long it takes. And as we know from the example of South Africa, the victory comes when you're not expecting it. So we must keep going all the time. But as I've said, free speech on Palestine, stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people, but never allow any of the conspiracy theories or the anti-Semitic slurs to confuse people who are standing for freedom on Palestine. The Labour Party handled this question badly, I think. It let it all be muddled. Two minutes left and I've come, I'm coming to an end. <laughs> Failed to make the distinction between criticism of Israel and its cruelties and its breaches of international law and anti-Semitism and its ugly history and its presence still in our country and the fact that it's growing. Remember, there have been attacks on synagogues in America, France, Germany, killing the people just for being Jews. There's more attacks on Muslims. We must stand together. As well as the evil of the bigotry and the hurt, it divides us and weakens us. And then we can't stand up for what is right in Palestine, Israel, in our own country, because we all end up bickering and hating each other. That's the purpose of it. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for organising the meeting. Let's stand firm and we'll get another surprise when we do see free Palestine in our lifetime. <laughs>